who's the next guy that will be the elite marquee primetime receiver for the Crimson Tide under Nick Saban. And is that guy Ja'Cory Brooks? Because uh, after some success he had uh, a season ago as a freshman, uh, there is some chatter going on that Ja'Cory Brooks may very well be the next marquee star, the next elite player, the next big-time wide receiver for the Crimson Tide. And the reason why we bring Brooks' name into the conversation is today John Mechie spoke with media reporters at the Combine at Indianapolis, and Mechie was asked point blank, you know, Mech, you had a good career at Alabama. You know, single season-wise, you're one of the best players to ever come to the program at that position. Career-wise, you had a strong three years. I mean, two national championship or two na- two SEC championships, excuse me, a national championship in 2020. You had a good career, had a strong career. But who do you think is next in line to be that special, uh, talented, just incredible wide receiver for Alabama? And – while well, some people were thinking, please let him say a J.I. Hall. Please let him say a J.I. Hall. Please, Jesus, let Mechie say a J.I. Hall. And some were probably going, please say Christian Leary. Please say Christian Leary. Please say Christian Leary. Others were probably thinking, please say JoJo Earl. Please say JoJo Earl. To goodness, say JoJo Earl. But John Mechie says he singles out Ja'Cory Brooks. He talked about how you know, the young group, at receiver, it's talented, it's fun to be around. You know, all of those guys can be really good. But he says C7, which is Brooks' Nick's, Brooks's nickname, C7, Ja'Cory Brooks, if I had to put a stamp on somebody, I think that guy, I think he's going to be really good. I think he's next. I think he's a special talent. This is coming from one John Mechie. And what's interesting here is, if you think about this at the wide receiver position, Alabama's had some guys that came in uh, with all of the hype, with all of the fanfare in recruiting, but they did well. They backed it up. Julio Jones, 2008, came in with all of the fanfare, and people were saying, we got to get him. We got to have him. It's Julio freaking Jones. Got to get this guy in here. He changes everything. Got to get Julio in here, in here. And Julio changed the game. That he did. Then people saw Calvin Rickley in 2015, juking people out their shoes. We got to have Calvin. Got to get Calvin Rickley. Calvin Rickley came in here and rung out of hype, performed well. Then remember Jerry Judy, the same thing, juking people out of his shoes. And people were like, oh, dear goodness, can we please get Judy in here? And Judy came in here and performed well. But at the same time, Alabama has also had players that did not come in with all of the major hype around their names. And those guys, you look at them and go, wow, like, they were special. They were elite. They were single-season career record holder type of guys. Case in point, 2012, Amari Cooper. I mean, when Coop came in, the focus was Chris Black, Chris Black, Chris Black, Chris Black, the kid from First Coast High School in Jacksonville, Florida. Boy, is he fast. You can't catch that guy, Chris Black. Unfortunately, Chris Black gets hurt. Amari Cooper becomes the story. We all see what he did in Tuscaloosa. And then uh, there was Devontae Smith, who comes in with Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs. No, Jalen Waddle came in a year later. But Devontae Smith didn't get a lot of the immediate attention. But what happens? He catches the game-winning touchdown versus Mississippi State in the 2017 regular season. And then he catches the game-winning touchdown off the arm of Tua Tagovailoa in the 2018 National Championship game against Georgia becomes a folk legend hero. Then he becomes the Heisman Trophy winner. You know, Devontae Smith didn't come with a whole bunch of hype, put his head down, went to work, and was a special player. And then you even look at a John Mechie of whom, of course, not as much as the other two, but John Mechie this past season put his head down, 
went to work, didn't come in in 2019 with a whole bunch of hype, but led the team in receptions last year with 96. Had over 1,000 yards receiving, 1,142. Had eight touchdowns, and if could have stayed healthy, Alabama with him on the field, along with Jamison Williams, would have won a national championship over Georgia. So we've seen uh, the guys that came in uh, with the fanfare have success, but then we've also seen the guys that came in here without all the fanfare have big success. And when you look at Ja'Cory Brooks, she did not come in 2021 with a whole bunch of fanfare, with a whole bunch of conversation. Uh, a J.I. Hall snatched a lot of that conversation. And then all that he didn't get, Christian Leary got. And all he didn't get when people figured out what JoJo Earl was when he flipped late in the 2021 signing class, he got a lot of attention. So Ja'Cory Brooks didn't have a lot of that you know, that talk, that dialogue and discussion. But when you talk to coaches about him, especially Coach Saban, when you talk to teammates about him, they always say he's grinding, he's working, he's got his head down, he's, he, he's doing his responsibility, he runs the right routes, he's a technically sound route runner, he makes big catches, he makes big plays, he does everything the way you want to see a receiver do and, and operate. And, and Coach Saban, you know, raves about him. And Bryce Young raves about him. And James, uh, John Mechie last season, you know, raved about this young man. And we saw what he did a season ago. Yes, he had 15 catches, and all of those came in the last six games of the season. But against Auburn, where you needed to have it, where either you make this catch or Auburn walks out of Jordan Hare Stadium as the winners of. The Iron Bowl and Ja'Cory Brooks comes down with a 28-yard touchdown catch to tie the game at 10 to force the four overtimes, Alabama getting the two-point win. And then against Cincinnati, makes a big catch there in the Cotton Bowl for a 44-yard touchdown. He led all receivers with 66 yards on those on four catches and in the national championship game. What was he targeted like nine times? A team high nine times? Had six catches for 47 yards. So Brooks, in moments last year, stepped up, made big plays. And uh, Bryce Young uh, has all the confidence in the world in Ja'Cory Brooks. We've talked about this before. You know, which guy or which group of guys will become uh, those receivers that Bryce feels the most comfortable with, the most confident with, and can trust C7 Brooks is one of those guys because Bryce Young always talks about the way he runs routes in practice, the way he works back to the football, the way he stays late after practice, getting those reps in, that timing in with Young from that quarterback perspective. So for John Mechie to name Ja'Cory Brooks, that's a big deal because to me it goes back to remember when Jonathan Allen was – getting ready for the 2017 draft. And everybody around Jonathan Allen was saying, hey, big man, big man, big man, who's the next freak on the defensive line? Who's the next monster? Who's the next guy we got to watch for? And people were expecting Allen to say Raekwon Davis because he's six foot seven and 300 plus pounds. But Jonathan Allen said, watch 92, Quentin Williams, big Q. He's the freak. He's the guy. And people were like, psh. Allen, whatever. You know you meant to say Raekwon Davis. Jonathan Allen goes, no. Watch Quinnen Williams, 92. He's the freak. Watch him. And we all saw what Quinnen Williams became, especially 2018 when he had 19 and a half tackles for loss, eight sacks, unanimous All-American, number three overall pick in the 2019 draft. So here comes John Mechie, who has played at that wide receiver position had success, he is stamping Ja'Cory Brooks. He likes all the receivers, but he says, C7 Brooks, I feel like I think this guy, good, special, next talent right here, Ja'Cory Brooks. It, it just makes spring football that much more exciting to watch. And now Brooks is going to be under a microscope here, but I think he's got the ability and the capability to get that job done.